Brenna? Yes. Are there any unspoken prayer requests you can make them known by raising of your hand? God will acknowledge. Let's all bow our heads in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, to come and build the throne of grace, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us, Lord, to wake up this morning and close in our right minds with a reasonable portion of our health and our strength. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your presence that we feel right now in the sanctuary, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your angels that you encounter around about us, Lord. Lord, keeping us safe, Lord, from the danger both seen and unseen. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for blessing, Lord, for your presence that we feel, Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask so much to look for all these prayer requests that have been before you, Lord, touch and move, and each and every one of them according to your will, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask, Lord, you bless our hearts right now to receive your word, Lord. Open up our ears and give us to hear your word, Lord. Bless us not just be hearers of your word, but to be doers, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and that you're going to do in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen.
I'd like to thank you, Brother Tom, for Philly Prime for leading us in praise and worship. And at this time, I'd like to minister Alan the Usher to come and to help us receive his evening offering. And also, we have some more prayer requests that came in. So when we pray over the altar, Ms. Allen, would you please pray for these prayer requests? We have a prayer request that came in for Sister uh, Deborah and also the Bates, and Sister Harris, and also uh, Sam. He has a, a big blood pressure problem. And also pray for uh, James Morrison. He is uh, re-enlisted back into the service, and he is in uh, Fort Carson, Colorado. So let's pray, pray for we pray for the offering. Let's also pray for them. You know, those for those prayer requests. And again, it's the Harris, the Sister Harris, uh, Sister Deborah, the Bates. Uh, Sam's uh, blood pressure and James Morrison. Amen. So, uh, Mr. Allen, would you please pray for us, y'all? Father, we're grateful. We're thankful, God, yes, that you are here tonight. Uh, Thank you. know, Lord, since yes, there's nothing too hard for you. Yes, Lord. Yes. Father, we're asking you right now, Lord, that the divine healing yes, would flow, Lord, and touch the body, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Lord, Lord, yes, Lord. Lord, 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 Lord
Hallelujah. Would you think about the goodness of the Lord and just, just worship Him right now in this moment. You can be encouraged in this moment right now. You can be strengthened in this moment right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm not just trying to prolong just to prolong. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. There are times the Spirit of the Lord just settle down in a moment. Amen. And we want to be sensitive to that moment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your protection, for your provision, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for keeping my family, Lord. Protecting my family. Thank you, Lord, for putting us in a great church, God. Connecting us to you, Lord, in a great way. Come on, somebody, thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. My goodness. Thank you, Lord, for. Hallelujah, every blessing, God. The valleys that we made it through, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, those times, God, we didn't even know how to lift our head, our hands, but yet you came up beside us and you helped us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the healing that have taken place in our bodies and in our minds. And in our homes, hallelujah. Thank you for saving family members. Go ahead and give it my thanksgiving for saving family. Hallelujah. They may not be here right now, but thank God for saving them. Speaking faith and worshiping in faith and giving praise and faith. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Because you're such a good God. You're such a mighty God. You don't waste time, Lord Jesus. You don't waste a moment in our lives. And we give you praise for it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, I love the presence of God. Amen. I know that. We Pentecostals have a lot of cliches, but amen, you do find joy in the presence of the Lord and strength. Thank God for the strength that he give us. Praise the Lord. I didn't have a bad day. Amen. I had a good day. The Lord was good right. to us. Amen. But I thank God for opportunities. Amen. That he give us to be testimonies, to be a light, to be an encouragement to somebody else. Amen. That's what this is all about, right? We, we, we live to give, right? Amen. And so we thank God for the life that we are able to give, amen, and share with others. Thank God that we have the ability to do that. Amen. Even when it gets tough and it's difficult, I'm thankful that the Lord gave me the opportunity to still smile. Yes. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Everybody might not like to smile, but amen. He let me smile. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Amen. So I'm thankful for that. Amen. God's a good God. Amen. Anybody thankful here today? Amen. Somebody testify real quick. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I just thank and praise the Lord that the Lord is awesome. Amen. Amen. He's on my
law for waking me up this morning, throwing me out. I just thank and praise the Lord for healing my body. I, I, I feel like, what, three, four days maybe? Yeah. That I have walked without the walker. That's right. Yeah. 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 I'm a little slow, but I'm getting better. That's and the right. Lord is helping me, he's watching me, and he's keeping me. And I've just been over, I've been overflowing with joy. Amen. Overflowing ever since New Year's Eve when Minister Crowder came in. I was like, like whoa, you know, something happened. You know what I'm saying? It didn't turn around Sunday morning. You know, and I got another good dose. I was like, woo! I got scared. <laughs> I said, there's too much happiness right here. You know? <laughs> but I just thank and praise the Lord that he is watching and keeping my family and friends. My friend made it from Washington, Seattle, and she said she told, uh, she's closer to Tacoma. She says Seattle because everybody's familiar with it, you know. And uh, she came and spent the day, and we haven't seen each other in years, you know. But it was a wonderful day. Yeah. She don't like Tulsa. <laughs> she said, "Oh no, I can't come stay in Tulsa." But anyway, I just thank and praise the Lord for that moment, you know. And uh, I just thank and praise for my church. I, I've seen uh, uh, the, the video, you know, online. I guess that's what you do online when you push the little button to come up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'd be doing, you know, but I watch the video online and everything. I just thank the Lord. I am feeling wonderful. Yes, I am feeling wonderful. I know that um, it, it, it gets rough. It got rough, and I was, you know, going through a moment of fear. You know, Pastor preached about fear. He said, somebody got a little fear going on, you know. And I was like, he just be right over every time I walk through the door. Everything to be in my mind at that time, he brings it out, you know, from the pulpit. I was like, is he? <laughs> What's going on? But I just thank and praise the Lord to have a pastor mm -hmm. that knows your heart, Amen. you know, and knows God's heart, Amen. you know. And I just pray for all the saints and all my friends and all my family. Amen. Beautiful testimony. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. All the testimonies, would you? Amen. One more time, lift your hands to the Lord. Testify, love our Lord that way. Thank you, Jesus.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to thank uh, God for such a witness. your attention to the book of Proverbs, verse 26, then 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 4 to 8. Proverbs, the uh, 3rd chapter, the 26th verse, the King James Version. My son, give me thine heart. And let thy eyes observe my way. First Corinthians, the third chapter, beginning at the fourth verse, the King James Version. For while I said, for while one said, I am of Paul, and another I am of Paul. So I'm loving. Thirteen, first Corinthians thirteen. Four to eight. Truth. Yeah. 
what love really is. Love. My son, give thee thy heart and let thy eyes to serve my ways. And this particular text is so powerful. It's very simple and basic. But the Lord wants our heart. In this verse in Proverbs, we're told to give the Lord our hearts and to observe his ways. The Lord wants us to do this, not so that, amen, he feel good, but rather that we may experience the fullness in him. When I look at the pages in reference to the apostles and how they died, they loved the Lord yeah. with everything they had. Amen. They had trials and tribulations. One of the greatest apostles walked in shoe leather was Apostle Paul. It amazes me how he could go to a trial, and, amen, and go to another trial, and he just hold on and, and love the Lord. This didn't happen overnight for Apostle Paul. You see, Apostle Paul was highly educated, amen, and, and he persecuted the Christians. And then he got a revelation on the road to Damascus who he would persecute. He realized he was going against Jesus. Yes. Amen. Apostle Paul and his religion at that particular time, amen, he really loved his religion. Yeah. He was involved in it, amen. But when he got the revelation of who Jesus Christ was, he began to fall in love with Jesus. The Lord wants us to do this not so that we can feel good folks, but he wants us to experience his love. The Lord knows that our best lives happen when we totally surrender to him. Come on, come on. This begins with giving our heart to him as we watch his ways. Yeah. Amen. It takes time to actually personally fall in love with an individual. But as time go on, the love begins to grow stronger and stronger and you begin to trust one another. When you commit to the Lord and give your heart to him, when you first got converted, you were simply a babe. Right. But in order for spiritual maturity to, to count, you have to love him. Amen. Hello? You have to love him. That's what spiritual maturity is all about. It's really falling in love with Jesus. What does it mean to give our hearts to the Lord? I think on the basis level, it means that we love the Lord above all things. Isn't that something? Loving him above all things. 
Praise God. I, I remember years ago when we, uh, me and my wife first got married and uh, I'll be very honest with you, we started off not really trusting one another and we started off trying to change one another. <laughs> well, <laughs> amen. But as time went on, uh -huh. we began to mature. Amen. <laughs> There's no need to try to change each other. Uh -huh. oh, yes. But simply work together and love on each other. Uh -huh. That's right. When we make decisions to love the Lord more than anything, uh -huh. we make known <laughs> to Him the primary purpose of our lives. The best thing I can tell you tonight how you can grow in God is not paying, double paying your tithes. Right. But not just simply come to church. But loving above everything. But loving above everything. Getting to know him. The more we know the Lord, the more we understand his love for us. Yeah. That's true. Guess what? Then we want to know him more. That's right. Yes, sir. Yeah. There's nothing like a trial. And knowing there's someone that you love, that they love you back. I was looking at this particular word in 1 Corinthians 13, where it gives us the definition of love. When you really look at this, you can't help but see Jesus. That's right. Hello? Yes, sir. He had such a relationship with the Father. In other words, his humanity had such a relationship with the Father. And Jesus was willing to do anything. Of course, we know that Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. But he had to contend with the flesh in the spirit. Right. Amen. The only way he could allow his flesh to be crucified was he loved get a revelation on this. Yes, sir. How important it is to love Jesus. I recall President Obama was one for election and someone would scream out I love you! Mm -hmm. And he'd turn around and say, I love you back. Can somebody shout out to the Lord and tell the Lord that you love him? Amen. I love you. I love you. I love you. You know what? He'll love you back too. Amen. Yes, he will. One of the best methods of spiritual maturity is the depth of our understanding of the Lord's love. When it requires something of us, it's because he loves 
process. Because our understanding is correlated with the amount of time that we spend with the Lord. Taking time out. Reading your Bible. Spending time in prayer. Praise God. When you love someone, you want to spend time with them, don't you? That's right. We should always observe the Lord's ways. We can learn about his ways through the word of God. Have you ever been in a situation that you begin to pray and ask the Lord to do something for you or to help you in a situation? I remember one time, we was in a small house. It was about 1,300 square feet. And I didn't have a, a pastor, study, a library, anything. It was a small house. And I got to thinking, you know, I could knock out a wall and uh, add on a room real quick. But at the time, Simply because I was falling, had fell in love with Jesus, and I was willing to do anything for him because I surrendered to the Lord, and the Lord took what I was thinking and began to make a way. Because it's amazing how if you love someone, what you want to do. You want to give them something, don't you? Right. That's what the Lord is. When you fall in love with the Lord, he's going to give you something back. Let's thank the Lord for victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to give you something back. Yeah. Well, I was riding in a, a mail truck in Gilcrease Hills, and there was a house, two houses, as a matter of fact, for sale. Big old house. And I, I just decided to call the real, let me go check this house out. I didn't have no money to buy no house. I said, I'm going to check it out. So the real came and told me about this one house. I looked at him and I said, I can't afford that. And I stepped across from that in the cul de sac and it was another house. It was about 3,500 square feet. Uh, the back of it was to the pond. Had a deck upstairs. Had a big old game room. Had a big old study mm -hmm. with a desk already in with a chair. Mm -hmm. I walked out. And the Lord put my mind, give a bogus offer. I gave a bogus offer for $64,000. Mm. And told them, put a new roof on. And they came back to me and took $64,000 and said, you put a roof on. The whole time going through closing, I sit there and I thought, this ain't real. This ain't, I'm talking about an over $200,000 house at that time. Amen. That was, Amen. Some years ago, I said, this, this, this don't seem like it's real. Right. But when you surrender the Lord, there's no telling how the Lord will bless you and help you. We closed on the house for $64,000. And I hired a guy to put a roof on it for, 11, I think it was $10,000. And 
and lived in the house for several years and made double. Right. More than I paid for it. I, 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 I can't remember exactly how much I made, but we made a lot of money off the house. And uh, But the Lord blessed us because he loved us. As well as how he answers prayer in our lives. When we couple these two and keep our hearts tender to see the Lord work. He works in a variety of ways. We will see and experience God's faithfulness, justice, and kindness. The Lord has a way because he loves you to bless you with things that you don't even ask for. If you ever really want to prosper, fall in love with Jesus. Surrender your heart into the Lord. That's the answer to prosper. He owns everything. Praise God. The devil don't want you to surrender your heart to the Lord. No, he don't. Because he knows and if you surrender your heart wholeheartedly to the Lord and make up your mind that you're going to serve him with everything, the Lord is going to bless you over and over and over and over again. Praise God. Another little incident happened. I needed a truck. They said, when you come to Oklahoma, you got to have a truck. <laughs> I think the Lord was on my side to help me out with a truck. Yes. I picked up the Tulsa World and looked in the world and saw a truck for sale. I called a guy, and a guy came over to the church in the parking lot. Beautiful red truck. It was custom made. Yes. I'm going to tell you how good the Lord is. He owed money on the truck. He sold it to me, and he paid off the rest. Yeah. And I had a truck with low miles on yes. it. It had a custom cover on it, big old wheels on it, chrome wheels on it. It was as clean. I couldn't even believe when he pulled up in the parking lot how good it look. <laughs> God knows how to bless you. Yes, Let's thank the Lord. Hallelujah. But surrender to him is the best thing you could ever do. As we grow more and more like him, we will see these characteristics reflected in our lives. They call Pentecostals. Sometimes they say, well, that's charismatic when you name it and claim it. No. We have it first. No, that ain't it. <laughs> if you love the Lord, he loves you back. He loves you back. And he sees what you need. Yeah. 
That's right. The Bible says he will provide uh -huh. your needs, your needs. Yes, according to his riches and glory. Yes. And if you need a house uh -huh. and you say uh -huh. and you surrender to the Lord, yes, Lord. you're going to get a house. You're going to get a house. That's right. Yes, Lord. That, that's right. I'm just telling the truth. Praise God. I give you a prime example of someone that surrendered her heart to the Lord. She's in this church. She had an accident, towed in a car. But it was a blessing. Uh -huh. She went to the dealership, signed the loan, and got a car. Yeah. And because Jesus loved her, he saw how much she had in the bank. Yeah. The lady that passed away, the daughter, called her and said, I'm going to pay the loan off. Brother Carl, that's right. Oh, yes. That's Lord. right. Amen. Amen. That's, that's right. because. He loves it. Let's thank the Lord for being around him. He loves it. Yeah. 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 He wasn't finished with that. No, he wasn't. <laughs> Amen. Then the insurance company sent her. I'm not going to tell you, but it was a big check. Amen. <laughs> Can't nobody, Can nobody do you like Jesus. Like we you clap your hands and all come to Can't nobody do you like Jesus. sister met me years ago. And she came to my house. And know what she said? She said, Pastor, I've been saving all my times. Hello? And she gave me all her time that she was saving. And the reason she could do that is because she loved the Lord. Yeah. And one day, she surrendered her heart to the Lord. Would you say that out of um. Praise God. You can't go wrong falling in love with the Lord. You can't. Uh, I got to wrap this up. I, of course, I had four kids, and from the time they were little, I used to tell them, you're going to college, you're going to college. Now, I didn't have a college fund, but I was telling them, you didn't want a college. I'm just telling you, if you fall in love with Jesus, he knows how to bless you. So I was invited to my oldest son's graduation. We were paying out ties. My wife was working in the sweatshop, mm -hmm. putting dresses together. She done that to make sure that all the kids had nice clothes to wear. Back then, the interest rate was 12%. We had a beautiful little house we were paying for. Tell you what, we sure was struggling back then. It was hard. With the graduation, we sit back. We didn't know how the Lord was going to bless us. Uh -huh. 
When they got finished calling my son's name, he had $250,000 worth of scholarships. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone would say, hmm, that's just one's a coincidence. Well, it happened four times. That's <laughs> right. It happened four times. And they didn't just graduate from an Indian type college. Right. They graduated from an Ivy League college in the Midwest. Yeah. Let's thank the Lord. God knows how to bless you yeah. if you simply love him. Yeah. You came here with a need tonight. I just told you how to get it. You came here with a need tonight. I just told you how to get it. This office is open right now. Would you come and spend some time loving on the Lord tonight? Yes. Yeah. He sees your need. He's a prayer answered God. <laughs> just see you walking without the, the walk because you love him. And he's loving you back. Yes, yes. He's loving you back. He got your tohori amaka yakapa. He's loving you back. Come on, love on him. He ato shalabakori amaka. He's loving you. He ato shalabaka. He's loving you. He's loving you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's loving you. He's loving you. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's loving you. He's loving you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He's loving you. Come on, love him. Love on tonight. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Love on him. Love on him. Surrender your heart unto the Lord. Ain't no telling what the Lord could do in your life, but you just totally surrender your heart unto the Lord. Love Him above everything.
there's anyone that knows how to love me back, it's Jesus. And if you love him, you give your heart to him, he's going to love you back. <laughs>